Hey, welcome to Digging Into the Bible. My name is Jim Barnard. This is a production of Taylor Coaching. Well, we made it a week. Thank you for joining me on day seven. We are looking at Matthew chapter four, the temptation of Jesus. Before we jump in, I just want to point out that over the, the last week, I have been trying to call out verbally any time that there is a callback to the Old Testament, a prophecy or a quote. Um, today, there are a lot of them. Uh, there is no opportunity for me to um, call them all out verbally. I will add the verse references here on YouTube, um, but if you are listening, you won't get any of that. Um, I just think that Often it's been a place that maybe if you'd like to dig in a little bit further, that might be a good place for you to dig in by going to the Old Testament and seeing where those references come out of. So um, there's so much to cover. I don't want to delay. So here we go. This is Matthew 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. I find this dialogue so interesting between Jesus and Satan. Um, you know, this experience comes immediately after Jesus' um, baptism. You know, uh, he, was, he was forced into the wilderness while his hair was still wet, and, um, you know, he goes hungry, and he's tempted by Satan over hunger, and Jesus passes that test. And and then he's tempted to um, call out to angels to save his life, and he doesn't fall for that. He passes the test. This third temptation is so fascinating to me because Satan says, look at all these kingdoms. And this presumably to me means like not just uh, at that point. I think it was like past, present, and future. Look at all these kingdoms. And, you know, what is the asset of a kingdom? Truly, it, it is people, and people are the reason that Jesus came. Jesus is desperate for people, and so Satan is giving him the ultimate temptation of you, you, can, you can be with your people here and now. You know, one thing I think is true is that, um, you know, Jesus doesn't have his people now. You know, like, truly, he doesn't have all of them. He wants them, but he, he can't have them now because he doesn't have dominion over this world. At the fall in Genesis, Satan became the, the ruler and the reigner of this world. You know, I, I, I can think of all the craziness that's happening in this world and, and say, well, Satan, that's on you. You have dominion of this world now. Um, you know, Jesus has dominion of, of the eternal, but not this world. He's, he's given that up. And so Satan is basically saying, you don't have to wait for the then and there of heaven. You can have these people here and now. You will, can be their ruler. I'll go away. And on one level, I, I kind of wish Jesus would have made that deal. Like, how much greater would things have been here and now? Like, I, I don't think we'd have coronavirus. I don't think that we would have political, ah, you know, like, I just think this world would be, would be better. The problem is, is that Jesus needed to go to the cross. Sin had been enacted. Our bodies are in the process of dying. So he would have us in the here and now, but then he wouldn't have us for the then and there because really these temptations are designed to stop Jesus from going to the cross. You know, Satan can't just stop the cross from happening. But I think what he's trying to do is stop um, Jesus from being the perfect sacrifice that he is. 
knowing that that would crumble the whole system. But Jesus holds strong. He says, I, I, I want to have my people here and now so desperately, but I will be patient. And for me, I, I, I actually am so glad because on one level, I can't have him fully until the then and there of heaven, but I can have him at least a little bit I, because, you know, I am his and he is mine. Um, I, I can have them in the here and now. And um, I've clearly gone over time on five minutes. There's just so much to cover there. I hope that that has spurred some thought in you and that you dig in further on this because this one is, is a big story. So that's what I have. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I look forward to tomorrow as we dig in further on Matthew 4. I will see you then.